Hey, happy Thursday, everybody, and welcome to the Draw Along Show. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be doing some drawing together. We have a little step-by-step -step action in the You Draw It portion of the show, followed today by an art tip. We like to do those from time to time. Today's is a very good one. In fact, this art tip might just help you to be able to draw anything on the planet or off the planet. In other words, anything at all. Pretty cool. Uh, and then we're going to do, of course, the animal and activity game where you will suggest for me in the chat an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, bizarre, unexpected, and we'll draw it in the time that we have remaining in the show, which is usually only a few minutes. And somehow we manage to just skate on through right to the end with no problems. It's amazing. Uh, but that's all thanks to your really fun suggestions. Now, if you're watching over on YouTube or Twitter, remember that I am following the chat at be.net slash live. All right, and speaking of the chat, we have some fine folks joining us right now. Let's say hi to some folks right now. Steven's here, hey Steven. Sam, hello, and Corey, and Mercurial. What's up, Bliss? I see Ivana is saying hello from Spain. Buenos dias, very cool. Also, Silen, nice to see you as well. And uh, did I say hi to Umicorn? I hope I did. Um, and we have some more folks coming in as well as we speak. So it's time for us to get cooking with some drawing. Remember to grab yourself something to draw with, okay? A pencil, a pen, a marker, or a crayon. If you like, you can go out and pull an antenna off one of those old television sets, dip it in some mustard, and draw with that. It's totally up to you, okay? Um, boy, I can hear the birds out there chirping away, okay? Which means it's almost time for fall. And then they're just going to fly away, which is going to be sad. I like that sound. Uh, but I do have a question for you. Why did the little bird get in trouble at school? Well, he was tweeting during a test. <laughs> All right, and now it's time for us to get drawing. Grab your materials. Let's get to it. Remember, to do these drawings, you have to be able to do three. Count them three simple things. They are a straight line. Okay, that's number one. Numero dos is a zigzag. And numero trois ha, 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 is a curve, a linear line. Remember, it could be an S curve, a C curve. You can do those, right? Today's is going to employ quite a few curvilinear lines, so be ready for that. Ah, let's get cooking here, folks. Let's get started. Hey, Corey. You're laughing at my joke. Oh, I appreciate it, folks. The jokes are bad on this show. I just want to forewarn you, okay? Today's drawing is going to start with a straight line, all right? Now, remember, when I say straight line, you don't have to draw a perfectly straight line. Don't worry about that, okay? So there's our line. It's not a very long one, okay? We'll draw a line that's a little shorter, angling up that way. All right, now let's think about this like the face of a clock, okay? So that's maybe going up towards two o'clock, somewhere in that vicinity, all right? Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna curve up, all right? And we're going to stop that curve as if this line, imagine this line is carrying all the way up to here. Wanna make yourself a little dot? That's always a helpful thing to do. You can give yourself something to aim for. See that? I make a little dot for myself. I know that's really small. Zoom in so you can see that right there. See that little dot? All right. It's my target. So then I just curve up towards it like that. All right. Then I want to steady that curve out and carry it back this way. So we kind of just do that. All right. That is step four of the drawing. Uno, dos, tres, and cuatro right there. All right. So this is what your drawing should look like. Okay. We have the first line. We angle up this way. We curve up and we kind of straighten it out as we go back. All right. Next thing we're going to do is right here, 
okay, I'm going to draw a little line traveling upwards at the same angle as this line right here. We're just going to go like that. In terms of distance, you'll notice that this line travels about halfway the distance of this line. It's good to do these kind of comparative measurement things. I think it always helps you when you're drawing. Now from here, I'm going to curve down and pass this line, right, like this. Curve down and pass it. And then from here, I'm going to curve out and in. Out and in. All right, see how I left a little gap right there? That's a good thing to do, little gap. We came up this way, we curved down, and then we curved up and out, and we connected with that second line of the drawing. And that's where we are so far, folks. Uh, traveling up from this very first line, okay, right to about here, I'm going to make a circle, all right? And the right side of that circle should align with this line right here, okay? Bum, 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 bum. There you go. Now inside that circle, I just make a little line that's diagonal like that. And already we know what's going on here, don't we? Right? We can sort of tell what's going on. This is easy. Um, yeah. All right, now from here, we're going to come straight out and do a little curvilinear action at the end. So here we go, straight out, curvilinear action, okay? And then I want you to just curve down like that. Straight on out, curve up, curve back down. And then from here, we're going to leave a little space and we're going to curve in and stop right about there. Okay? Excellent. I want you to look at how much space we have between the back of this eye, okay, and now it's going to be the back of the head. All right, so just see how much room we're leaving right there. All righty. Now from here, all right, we're going to have a little gap and then a line. And we're going to repeat this several times. A little curve, okay? And then we do the same thing. We go line, little curve, line, little curve, three times. And we wind up pretty close to the base of our first line, somewhere in that vicinity. If you're not quite there, if you're a little higher, a little lower, not a big deal. Won't make any difference at all, okay? Now, speaking of that first line, I want to just pop up in the other direction, okay? So it's a mirror of that kind of a line. And then I'm going to do that here and do it again. All right, we're adding some nice feathery texture here to our friend. Okay, now, this line's coming straight down. This one angles out. From here, we're going to drop another line straight down about the same length as that first line. Okay, see that? These are about the same, aren't they? Yeah. And then from here, we're going to angle back this way. Now, this angle will be different from this one. It's going to be a little closer to vertical. Okay, so let's do it. There we go. Longest line of the drawing so far. Now, how far back does it go? Well, if you look here, okay, and if I were to drop a line straight down from the back of the head, that is about where that line stops, okay? Good thing to notice. Um, Polly wants a crack, Polly want a cracker, says Stephen. Yes. Yasmin, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. And I see uh, Viola is here and Fabio. Hey, everybody. Adrian, how you doing? Thanks for joining us for the Draw Along show. All right, now, from here, right, that second little notch that we made, we are going to start about right where, I'd say it's three quarters of the way back from the back of the head, right about here. We're gonna angle this way, okay? This is gonna be the top of that wing. And then we're gonna just, just interrupt right here. Okay, we're gonna cross over like so. A little bit of a cross there. See that, slightly different angle. Okay, and then here, this is cool. I'm gonna go down now at the same angle as this line, and then I'm gonna curve it slightly. Check this out, down and slight curve, okay? And then I'm gonna echo that multiple times. Again, again. Notice how though I'm starting a little higher each time, okay? So these are not lining up completely straight. So we have one, two, three of those, okay? And then right here, I'm going to curve this way and curve that way, all right? And then I'm gonna take this line and uh, bring it up and bring this one up like that. So we make this cool pattern right here. See that? That's a nice little pattern right there. All right, now moving on. From here, I wanna leave some space, okay? 
So I'm going to leave room for the back of the bird and the wing. Remember this angle here. We are going to start at that angle, right? But then we are going to slope downwards towards this point, all right? But it's going to be right here. We're going to leave ourselves a little space. So I'm going to start at that angle, slope downwards, and stop right about there. Okay, that looks good. So see that? That's the shape we're looking for. Now here, from just behind this part of the wing, okay, you just bring a little line down like this and you add a C curve, like so. All right, we're looking at the foot from the side view, okay? Very easy to do that. And just under here from the wing, we're gonna drop a line, leave a little space here and just drop a line down, okay? And we're then going to curve up like this, okay? That looks nice. And another space right here, and look how that just connects like that. Isn't that nice? Very good. And guess what, folks? You are pretty much done. Now, just a little bit of texture. If you want to add some texture, here's what you do. You come back to the back of the head. You add a little bump. You add a little bump. You add a little bump. Okay? You can do the same thing over here. Bump, bump. And here in the wings, some bigger bumps. Bump, bump, bump. All right? You want to add some on the chest? Go for it. Just a few little lines like that. And you really don't have to do much else, okay? There is your cockatoo. Ta-da! And that is the you draw it portion of the show today. Um, remember, you can always watch these back. They're on replay on YouTube and on Behance. But I hope you enjoyed that. Try and keep these nice and simple. And remember, three simple things for you to draw. Straight line, curvilinear line, a little zigzag here and there. You should be in good shape. All right, now, we are going to talk today about how to draw literally anything on the face of the earth. And like I said earlier, off the face of the earth as well. Here is our picture. Let's look at this for a second. This is what trips people up a lot when they are looking at something at an angle where they don't get to see all the information they're used to seeing. Normally when we want to draw a hand, what we wind up doing is this. We say, I'm going to draw a hand. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. There's my hand. We want to draw it where we can see all the details. Thumb and all four fingers, we see the palm. We understand things this way. It's how we design iconography, right? When you go and you see signs, you always see all the length of the arms and the legs for a figure on a sign for like a crossing the street, for example, a crosswalk. Um, but when this happens, when a lot of foreshortening happens, okay, we get tripped up. What is the secret to drawing something like this? All right, here it is. I know it's going to sound like I'm oversimplifying this. But what you have to do is two things. The first thing you have to do is tell yourself, I am not drawing a hand, okay? Or a whatever the thing is that you're drawing. I'm not drawing a hand. That's step one. Step two is to tell yourself that you're just going to draw some shapes, okay? You're just gonna draw some shapes. If you can do this, if you can divorce yourself from the notion that you're drawing a specific thing about which you already know a lot when it comes to the appearance of that thing, right? Shape-wise. If you can just forget that, put that aside and just draw the shapes that you see. Be true to what you see. You can draw anything. I mean, it's really that simple, folks. Um, now, this is easier said than done, don't get me wrong, but you can get in the habit of doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to knock this back for a moment because I want you to see what we're really dealing with here, okay? Look at the shape. All right. This is the general shape of what we're drawing, okay? It's the silhouette of what we're drawing. You look at that and you say, well, that doesn't look like a hand, does it? No, but that is the shape that we are seeing. And here's the good news. If you draw the shapes accurately, okay, your brain will be able to fill in the information and your viewer's brain will be able to fill in the information and say, I understand what I'm looking at. There's a hand pointing at me. What other information is needed for us to get that? Well, let's see. One finger, right? Two fingers a third finger, 
Now we have this one to deal with. What do we do there? Well, you just do the underside and I see a little fingernail there. Okay. And here we have a thumb. Okay. Thumbnail right there. Now, if I hide this, oh my gosh, everything's coming to light and we're saying, Hey, I get what that is. That is a finger pointing in my direction, right? So what is the secret here? Well, let's bring this back. The secret is for me, I'll make this a little smaller so I can draw this for you. The secret is for me to look at this and say, okay, general shape is kind of like this with a thing hanging down the bottom there. That's kind of the shape, all right? That's step one. I'm just looking at the shape and I'm copying it. Now I notice there's an angle here. So I go, okay, knock that in, good. That is sort of my containment shape or my silhouette, okay? Step two, how much real estate do these fingers take up? About this much, okay? The little knuckle bend right there. Boom. This finger is coming towards me. What do I see? Well, there's a shadow right there that's creating that curvilinear shape, right? So that's the shape I see. There's another little bump right there, okay? So I can just draw these bumps. I could even just shade the whole thing in, but look how nice this is. I'm giving an actual line right there for the top of the finger and fingernail. We just did this a second ago, right? There's my thumbnail, curve that out. Okay, wrap that around. A couple of little bumpy bumps here for the, the knuckles, right? Bumpy, bumpy. And we're drawing the thing. That's the ticket, folks. And that is your art tip for today. Forget about what you're drawing, just draw the shapes. You are gonna be doing okay. Alrighty. So it is time for us to move on to the old animal and activity game, where of course you will suggest for me a nice animal doing something strange. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. Before we get to that, you know what time it is. Appreciation station, everybody. Uh, today, well, look at that, who do we have? It's Corey, everybody. Corey, thanks for watching the show. Corey, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a time we were trekking through the tundra in a faraway land, and we stumbled on, lo and behold, a dodo bird. Everybody thought they were extinct. Of course, we did too. Now, I was about to trap it, but I'm so glad that you are so kind-hearted because you said, Kyle, don't do that. Leave the poor thing alone. Let it be. And uh, we let it go on its merry way, but not before taking a photo. Now, I still have my copy of that photo back there on my bookshelf. And I'm just curious, do you have yours? hope you do. Anyway, that was quite an adventure. And thank you again for being so kind-hearted. You did the right thing. Okay, back to drawing. Now, it is time for you to please suggest for me an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, bizarre, unexpected. You get the drift. Check it out. Yesterday we had a surfing monkey. Can't beat that, right? So what are you going to come up with today? Let's see. Put it in the chat and I will draw it. Okay, I'm going to get my nice light blue color for sketching. I love this. It's just such a nice color. And uh, I'm ready to go when you are. Are you ready? Here come some suggestions. A sloth on a unicycle, says Jessica. I love it. A catfish playing the flute. I didn't know fish could play the flute. A gazelle fashion model on a catwalk, please, says Stephen. A gazelle. Now, I know gazelles kind of look like deer, right? I need to look that one up. Um, a cat knitting. A mosquito sucking up jello. Ha ha, I love it. A lion on a bicycle. Mm hmm. Um, let's see, I gotta do something here. I like these ideas. Um, you know, I've never drawn a unicycle on this show, Jessica. I have not done that yet. Um, Steven, save that fashion model idea. I like that a lot. I gotta look up what a gazelle looks like. Okay, so please save that for next week. Here we go. Catfish, um, oh, sorry, a sloth on a unicycle. Great ideas as always, everybody. Let's see if I can make this work. Oh my gosh, sloth, sloth, sloth. I think we've drawn sloths before, but I always get a little tripped up with their funny heads and faces. Um, so let's see.
can make their eyes look kind of tired, right? Isn't that one of the keys? Sloths have ears, right? Do they have little ears like that? Making it look more like an otter, aren't I? I'm trying to picture a sloth in my head. Sloth, sloth, sloth. I can kind of see it. I guess their eyes are kind of big and tired looking. Let's see. This might wind up looking like more like an otter, but we'll do our best here. I'm trying to imagine um, how they looked in that uh, that Disney movie. What was it called? Zootopia, right? Is that the one? The sloths were funny in that. Maybe if I have his face kind of, if he's kind of like looking at us. that look more slothy to you? What are you thinking? Is that more slothy? Yeah, I think that's kind of slothy looking. Actually, let's make the, the wheel really small. I don't know why that's just funnier to me. And we need some pedals. I just realized that. <laughs> Hang on a second. Hold on. If I put one foot here, I'm gonna have to put the other foot kind of like, let's see if there's one pedal there. The other one's gonna go there. So that means this leg will have to come down kind of like that. That makes more sense, right? We can angle the... There, it's gotta be a really small unicycle because the, the pedals have to be on either side of the wheel, right? Isn't that how unicycles work? This is really tripping me up here, gang. Hang on a minute. This is why we do sketches. This is why we do a sketch. All right, let's get the wheel there. Oh, I know what it is. There's a chain, isn't there, with the unicycle? Yeah, so you can put you can put the wheel down there. I think that's how it works. It makes sense to me, anyway. Maybe I just invented a kind of unicycle. I don't know. Any unicycle riders out there? I wouldn't be surprised if we had some unicycle riders out there. Kind of saying hi, waving at us. All right, let's see if we can knock this out in two minutes. Are you ready? Here we go. Grab the darker blue. And let's make it work. Whoops, get on a different layer there. Do sloths have tails? I 
I don't even know. Do sloths have tails, guys? Help me out. I have no clue. I can always add one at the last second, but it's good to know, you know? I really don't know. Somebody, somebody tell me. <laughs> no tails is what I'm, is what I'm being told here. All right, no tails it is then. There's one petal coming across to the other petal. Little chain action right there. And away he goes. Sloth on a unicycle. Oh, you're so creative, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out for the Draw Along Show. More of that next week. And don't forget my master class tomorrow on how to do an Art Deco poster. Check that out, 4 p.m. Eastern. Everybody take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind, and I'll say ciao for now.